Hi guys, welcome to Online Awana. My name's Miss Laura. I'm really glad you're joining us today. I hope there's some cubbies and some sparks and some TNT watching. I'm gonna try to make it interesting to all of you. As you can see, I'm taping from my car because we have to use the time that we have and I'm waiting on kids to get out of basketball practice. So today, what I wanna to talk to you about is Joseph and how God used the hard things in his life for his good. The first thing I want to tell you about Joseph is his parents' names were Rachel and Jacob. Now, they had a problem in their family, was, and that was that Joseph was their favorite son. Um, when parents have a favorite, it causes the siblings to not like each other. So when you guys are parents, don't have a favorite. Um, anyway, so he had these dreams um, that showed that his brother and his parents would be bowing down to him. Now, he told his brothers about the dreams and obviously it made him upset. They were so upset that when he came to check on them, his father had told him, go check on your brothers. But when he came out there to check on them, they were gonna kill him. But the oldest brother named Reuben secretly wanted to save the kid. Um, and so he said, no, just throw him in a pit. Cause then he thought later I'll come back and save him and take him back to dad. Um, so the brothers decided, yeah, that was a good plan. They had him in the pit they sat down and ate their lunch, which is pretty cold hearted. If you throw your brother in a pit and then just sit down and have a snack. So don't be like that. Um, anyway. They saw some traders coming by on their way to Egypt and they said, hey, let's sell him. Never said what they did with the money. But um, sometimes we can get greedy for money, but don't ever let that guide you to make bad choices. Don't ever steal just to get money or do something wrong just to get money because money is not gonna make you happy. Only Jesus will. Anyway. So they sold him to some traders. Reuben came by later to rescue him, but then they had to make up a lie. And uh, well, actually they didn't really lie. They just took the robe to their dad that they had dipped in goat's blood and said, hey, tell me, is this your son's robe? But honestly, telling half the truth really is a lie. So when your parents ask you something, please honor God by telling the truth, even if it's going to get you in trouble. I can almost guarantee they will go easier on you if you will just be honest and own up to what you did than if you just lie because parents, they usually find out anyway. Okay, anyway, so he got sold into slavery. He went to a house of a man named Potiphar and he kind of got to be his like house manager. He must have had a big house, a rich guy, kind of like a butler maybe. Um, but there was an unfortunate problem there where Potiphar's wife lied about Joseph doing something. And Potiphar was so mad at Joseph. It just, apparently he didn't even ask Joseph his side of the story. He just believed his wife who was a liar and he threw Joseph in jail. Now Joseph was in jail for a while. And instead of pouting and being like, wow, bad day. First I got sold into slavery and then I worked really hard for this guy. His wife lies, now I'm in jail, now I'm mad. But he, he just worked really hard in jail and eventually he got to like be in command of the jail, except that he was still a prisoner. So he wasn't really in command, but they like let him run the jail. He was just a good, nice, hardworking, dependable guy. And while he was there, he interpreted a couple of dreams um, for, some, for some men and both of his interpretations were right. And so he told the one guy who got out of jail, hey, don't forget me. Tell Pharaoh that I'm a great guy. But he forgot him. But then later he remembered him. And he, when Pharaoh needed a dream interpreted, um, they went and got Joseph. They let him take a shower and he went and he interpreted Pharaoh's dream correctly. And so Pharaoh's like, wow, what a guy. Um, and so Pharaoh made him second in command. 
because Joseph had said a big famine's coming and you need to store up food. And Joseph even had a pretty good plan of how to do it. So he got to be one of the leaders in Egypt. Now remember his brothers back home, they got hungry and they needed some food. So they took a lot of money and they went to buy grain. And then the story gets really um, kind of complicated because Joseph saw them and of course he recognized them because they probably still look the same. It hasn't been that many years, but he probably looked more Egyptian. So they didn't recognize him. Plus they thought their brother was dead or a slave. They wouldn't have been looking for her him where maybe Joseph thought I bet my brothers will be coming this way um anyway so God worked it out through um seeing his brothers a few times God gave Joseph a plan for how to find out what was in their hearts and eventually um he revealed himself and said hey I'm your brother Joseph and at that point they were very scared because they're like, eh, he's probably going to kill us. But here's what he says. One of my favorite verses, Genesis 43, 5. Now do not be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. So Joseph is looking at the bad things that happened to him through the lens of God being in control of his life. And that's really what I wanted to talk to you about today, because we've heard of a lot of things that Joseph went through before he got to be second um, in command of Egypt. And one reason I think that might have been is God was preparing him. He, he had to learn some things, humility especially. Um, God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So um, always be humble instead of prideful. Pride in my own life has only led to trouble, where if I'll take the humble route, if I'll apologize, if I'll admit that I've done wrong, then I know I've done what God wants me to do. Um, my Bible study today said you should be thankful for any bad thing that happens to you. Why is that? Because anything that makes you closer to Jesus is good. Romans 8 28 is my all-time favorite verse for we know that in all things God works together for good to those who love him to those who are called to his own purpose and grace we need to love God we need to trust him we need to serve him then he can use those hard things to help us love him more what hard things do you face are you separated from family or friends do you have events being canceled in your life that were important to you are you worried about illness? Are you worried about getting COVID? I worried a ton about that because I have asthma and I thought maybe I would die. But you know what? We got COVID and we were fine. God took care of us. He sent friends. Um, he sent friends to bring us food. He sent friends with medical supplies even. Thank you, Lindy, if you're watching. Probably not, but um, he's, you may be worried about mask wearing. Um, but God will take care of you no matter what happens. School might be different. Maybe you have to sit alone, but God can take care of you through that. Um, school online might be hard, but God can help you through it. Just like he helped Joseph, just like he helped all the Smiths through COVID. He can help you. But here's how. Every day, guys, you need to spend time with God. You need to read your Bible and you need to pray. You need to trust him when hard things happen. You need to be thankful for whatever things happen so that you can be closer to Jesus. Now, I have some review questions and a game for you to play. Um, you need a water bottle like this. Have you ever done a water bottle flip? I'm not even going to demonstrate it because honestly, I can't do it very well. What you do though is you flip it and then it's supposed to land um, up on the ground and you can dump some water out. Actually, just drink it. Water's good for you. Um, so anyway, every time I ask, you can pause this and go get your water bottle or you can do it later, but I'm going to ask you some questions now. Number one, why did Joseph's brothers not like him? We'll pretend it's Dora the Explorer where she answers the question 
she asks you a question and then waits for you to answer and pretend she hears it. Okay, I hope you said something like, he was bragging, he told about his dreams, or he was the favorite. Number two, Joseph did the right thing and went to jail. Is life fair? I hope you said no. Sometimes it's not fair. Bad things happen to good people. The Bible says God sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Um, sometimes people get sick just because there's sin in the world and there's disease. Um, it doesn't mean somebody did something wrong always. Sometimes it does, but not always. Um, bad things happen to good people. If you understand that life isn't fair, um, it, life will be easier for you. You don't have to be so angry at every bad thing that happens to you if you understand life isn't fair. Um, but here's what you can remember. Even when life isn't fair, God is faithful. Last, how can I react to hard things in my life? By the way, did anybody flip your water bottle? You'll have to tell me about it at church or text me. Um, how do I react to hard things in my life? We should trust God. Sure, you can be sad. Sometimes you can be mad. But the Bible says, in your anger, don't sin. That means when you're mad about something bad that happens to you, don't go kick a puppy or hit your sister or yell at your mom or slam your door. Okay? You just trust God. You stop. You pray. God, I'm, I'm so frustrated. Please help me. And he can. All right, that's all for today. Thank you guys for watching. Look forward to um, seeing you on Sunday whenever you come, come back. Hey boys and girls, welcome to Awana. For today's game, we're gonna be playing Hey boys and girls, welcome to Awana. I'm Josh the Game Guy. I managed to escape my evil sister, Marissa, and to hijack this stream, but I better hurry or she'll track the signal and come for me. So for tonight's game, you have to take as many clothespins as possible and try to put as many as you can on someone's shirt without them realizing it. That's all for tonight's game. I gotta go!